Okay, we're back on finish cuts again. I figure probably the roughest test or most difficult test of getting a piece of wood to cut clean, besides something as figured, is one that is soft and punky to the point of being almost too rotten to turn. This is a piece of big leaf maple, and if you've ever turned it before, it does have a tendency to tear, and as you can see, the tear out's pretty bad right here. I smoothed that out a little bit. I'm going to take a cut here. This is an M2 high speed steel swept back wing type gouge and I'll show you what kind of finish cut I can get with that. So that actually roughed it up a little bit. Still tearing a few little chunks out of it. Okay, this is a little bottom of the bowl gouge which is, has more of your traditional grind on the front so fairly square and a steep bevel on it. So I'll come back into here, start to cut down, see what we get. Not as good as the other tools. So this is that fluteless gouge. Again this is one rubbing the bevel. Instead of at a 45 or so this is up at a very high shear angle again. And here's our nasty spot. Still a little bit of tear out in there, but way cleaner than what the other ones were doing. When you're getting shavings like that, this type with the long kind of curlies in them, that generally indicates you're getting a nice clean cut. I'll make another pass on that just for the heck of it, see if I can get it a little cleaner. Not a whole lot, but still this is that ultra punky area right there. And generally about the only way you can get those cut clean normal with normal tools, unless you're really dropping your handle for a high shear angle cut, is you have to put some sort of a wood hardener on it, which is either like super glue. Um, even putting water or finish on it doesn't help this type of stuff cut any cleaner. Okay, again this is my spindle roughing gouge. Again, not using it like this, using it up on its edge so I get a high shear angle. I'll start up in here somewhere and show you the difference you can get. much cleaner and to me it's that high shear angle. Now this particular area here is the nastiest part of the board. There's still a little bit of tear out there as you can see is way cleaner than that and again that's having that high shear angle. Okay so this is my scraper. This will be a bevel rubbing cut. Um, do notice too that this one is like half of a normal gouge and it's got more of a point on the end. Uh, if I tried this with a round nose gouge, it would want to catch. But again, this gives me that very high shear angle. So still not very pretty, prettier than that. It's like the higher that shear angle goes, the better they cut. I can try a pull cut here with the burr, and this does a decent job on some pieces, but this is so soft and punky, it's almost impossible.
not too bad. This is my problem spot here, the worst spot, and you're still getting tear out in there. Can't quite get it all out. So, yeah, my favorite tool, that um, fluteless bowl gouge or your spindle roughing gouges, they do a fairly nice job on that as long as you have it up on its edge like this. Never down like this because that corner wants to catch and dig in. little bit cleaner not a whole lot but again this this stuff's just about falling apart and that's what makes it so difficult to get any kind of a clean cut on another tool that you can make a finishing cut with this is referred to as a continental style spindle roughing gouge this is forged where they actually start with flat stock heat it and bend it again a very small tang goes into the handle this is not intended for any kind of roughing but again, when you rub the bevel and have it on a high shear angle, you can get a very nice finished cut. So up, rub the bevel, move the handle till it starts to cut. And this gives a very nice, clean finish. Little teeny tear out right there through that ripple. But anything in there will sand out with 120. Okay, this is another big variation of that continental spindle roughing gouge. And if you notice, this one has a much more rounded nose profile on it. This one, again, I want it up on its edge. And since the nose is so round, I don't want to be working up here because that makes the tool unbalanced. I want to be working more down here. So this is a drop the handle way down and then roll it over till it starts cutting. And then if you look at the shavings, these nice little curlies are coming off nice and easy, very little resistance and a very clean cut. That's that high shear angle. Now I rough that back up again. I'm going to show a yeah, pretty rough there. Good old myrtle wood and figured wood. There are two different cuts that you can do with this. This one is the same as that last scraper cut that I just did. It's going to be a shear cut, but I'm not going to be rubbing the bevel. I'll be up on the edge and it's going to be a pull cut. So roll it over, so I'm not rubbing the bevel. Very light cuts. And again, that, the high shear angle gives you a very nice clear cup. There's still very minimal tear out in there. Just a little tiny bit. So if I take this same tool, roll it on its bevel till it just barely starts to cut, I'm getting a bevel rubbing cut. And it will give me a cleaner cut than the one where I'm not rubbing the bevel. So that is a little tiny tear out there. Most of this will sand out with very minimal effort. I'm going to be using another scraper here. Um, I use this a lot of time for cleanup. On these you can see all these nice little rims and ridges there. It does make a decent finish cut. It doesn't make a great one. Uh, this one has a burr that's just straight from the grinder. And it probably won't make a difference as you can see from the camera. It will if you'd pass it around a little bit from the burnish, you know, the burnish burr does work a little bit better, but that's one of those microscopic things. So up on its edge, high shear angle. And I am not rubbing the bevel. And this will take a couple passes to 
get it cleaned up. So a lot smoother. Almost no tear out in there. You can feel a little bit if you rub backwards against the grain. But pretty nice and clean. And that same bevel that I have on there, I can actually take that. This is a bevel rubbing cut. It does a very good job of lifting it up before it cuts. And that is nice and glassy smooth. Okay, this is going to be another finished cut. Um, this is frequently called a shear scrape. Um, I don't consider it to be much of a scrape, but it is a shear cut because the tool is going to be up on its edge. This particular one, I burnished a burr on it, and I'll go into more detail on that in the sharpening section of this. This is going to be a very gentle pull cut, and I do round over this edge so it slides easier on the tool rest. And from the marks you can see that are in there, it will take s several passes to remove them. So this does give a very nice finish. There is still very minimal tear out in there, but most of that tear out will vanish with, you know, like 120 grit or so. This is more of a standard bowl gouge, fairly deep flute on it, fairly steep bevel on it. Um, first cut I'm going to take is with the handle more vertical, or the flute's more vertical, and I'll be cutting on this top part of the flute. Uh, we'll take it from here in. This gives you a decent cut, doesn't give you a great one, but it works. I'm not getting the long shavings that I was getting with the other tools with that real high shear angle. And I can't pass this one around for you guys to feel. It does have a nice surface that's maybe started at 120 grit or so sanding. There's some tear out there. But basically it doesn't have that high shear angle so it's not lifting the fibers as much. It's kind of yanking them out in a few spots. That can be done also has a pull cut. And this is a bevel rubbing handle dropped low. And if you look at the two different shavings, this is the one with the continental spindle gouge. This is the one with the standard bowl gouge. These are just seem to cut with a little less resistance. 